So I just came out of a live trading session with the Stocks with Josh Discord, the Chart Goat University, where we absolutely crushed it following the trade setups that I'm teaching every Wednesday and Friday. Uh, I made, I think, around $1,500. I got to go back and look at all the receipts, but it was an easy trading day. Could have made way more money, but it's a little bit harder to take high risk while teaching simultaneously. So I took moderate risk and was able to walk away with uh, definitely more money than most people make in a day trying to trade their time for money. Uh, I am taking a skill that when refined and perfected, nobody can take it away from you. And it's what we're doing in the Chart Goat University. Today, I wanted to jump on and talk about a couple things, and we're gonna talk about the SPY real quick, and we're gonna talk about the market next week and some important data that we got. I'll put it all together, and we're gonna talk about what to expect here uh, shortly, uh, as well as crypto. So we're gonna try to look at two things. We're gonna look at the overall market, and we're gonna look at Bitcoin take a big picture view at the market. This is the Stocks with Josh show. I appreciate you joining me. Thank you for simply dropping a heart and saying hi in the comment section. Hit that like and hit the subscribe if you want to get help trading these choppy markets, as well as begin your journey of being a consistent winner on Wall Street. That's, that's, that's what I'm doing. That's my journey. It's what led me to YouTube because uh, you know, for me, I spent just like you guys a ton of time struggling and trying to learn. And I would consider myself a technical analyst, a chart guy. Um, but at the beginning, I, you know, I thought that all the indicators were going to be like holy grails that once I understood them, that it would somehow lead me to understanding how to make money consistently. And the number one thing I learned is you've got to be able to be holding your winners and have a plan and a strategy to enter a trade when you know it can go up and give you at least a 2x return versus knowing when to cut your losers. Now, if you study and you read any books on Wall Street investing and trading, they're all going to tell you that the biggest mistake that beginning investors make is that they simply hold on to their losers too long. They don't protect their capital and their precious capital, which was accumulated by trading time for money, whittles away to nothing and then they give up and walk away on walk away from Wall Street just kind of feeling like a loser and it wasn't for them. This is not the case. So the very first thing that you've got to do if you're attempting to make money consistently on Wall Street is you've got to protect your capital, which means that every trade you get into, you have to have a strategy and you have to have a good reason. And if it proved not to be a good reason, I keep getting some little alarm here, so I'm going to turn off a few things. If it turned out to not be a good reason and you were wrong about getting into it, maybe you just blindly followed somebody on YouTube, you can only accept a certain loss right? And if you got a winner, one of the biggest mistakes that I used to make is when I got a winner, I would cut it way too early. So I would cut my winners too early and I would hold my losers too long. So you got to learn the charts. It's something that I'm teaching here. I've learned the charts. I've, I've somewhat cracked the code on the charts. I understand them pretty well, maybe better than some, maybe not as well as others but I've cracked the code on the charts. But more importantly, I married my knowledge of the charts with disciplines and controlling risk. And, I, and one of the biggest things that I uh, teach is when you make some money and you have a strategy that you're employing consistently every day, leave the market alone if you made your money for the day. Maybe one day you'll make 500, maybe you'll make 1,000, maybe you'll make 3,000, maybe you'll make 5,000. Leave it alone. One of the other big mistakes that I used to make is the minute I made a ton of money, it made me feel great and I thought, let me do it again. No, you need a big reset. You need a big pullback moment and you need to refocus yourself on getting used to that new capital that you see in your account and holding on to it, right? And reassessing, how does this influx in capital affect my risk reward strategy? Okay, enough of uh, that. Let's talk a little bit about my call and yesterday's video on Apple and Amazon. One, regarding Apple, I said I didn't feel good about it. I said normally there's a buy the rumor, sell the news event. Well, the rumor going into Apple was that things were not great. 
It seemed to be priced to perfection and a lot of unhappy customers who weren't terribly impressed with this most recent phone. So I was bearish on Apple and I was bullish on Amazon and I was right to be bullish on Amazon. Came out, did a, a trade alert there in the Discord, told everybody I was taking a lotto trade on it. Now this wasn't a absolute breakaway home run winner because the IV had already been high on Amazon, but I was able to lock in 94% on a $1,000 position. So I made just right around $940 and just put that into my pocket. And what am I gonna do with that? Well, I might do another lotto trade, uh, you know, because that's, I don't ever want to put precious capital, right, into those types of trades. I wanna take winnings and be more speculative with them. But it was a huge win. Right about Apple going down, Amazon going up. Now, kind of feel like the market would have gone down today. Now, while I'm talking to you, the market's been relatively up, but we'll see how it ends going into the close. As you know, I have been predicting for the last three weeks that the market would largely sell off the two weeks preceding the week of the election. Now, it doesn't have to happen. It's just what happened in the last two cycles. The market hates uncertainty and an election doesn't have a certain outcome. Nobody can say for certain what will happen next week and as a result, the market wants to go risk off in the face of uncertainty. Now, as we move closer to the outcome, we could begin to see the rally begin. We could begin to see the markets heat up and move to the upside and the markets could give us a beautiful run up making that break above 600 in the month of November. But here's what we have to be concerned about. So let me show you uh, the chart on the SPY right now. And again, we're gonna look at the Bitcoin chart here as well today, but let's go into the SPY chart and I'm just gonna show you where my concern lies and what we have to do to be back in the bullish territory. Okay, so here we're looking at the SPY, which is a bearish ascending wedge, which we broke beneath we back tested and we had this um, gap down candle to the support that I gave you guys of a right around 568. Now today we have a green candle, but it's an inside candle, which means that we really don't have a reversal moment until we can get back above 575. Now we might get there by the close of today. I don't know. But what I do know is that we are on the outside of this bearish ascending wedge, which could be a fake out. It could be what would be referred to as a bear trap, right? Because if next week the market wants to rally, we have to push all the way back above this 589, okay? So that's a pretty high target. So the market has to be explosive, okay? because otherwise we are beneath this bearish ascending wedge, we've broken down and we have trouble. So let me just go through a couple lines for you. So we need to get above the current previous day's candle, that's right around 575. And if we do, then I think the target becomes this 589 and we then have to get above 589 and the target pushes us into this broader rally, which could be all the way up to 600 and even as high as 620. But I would tell you that the first test comes at 575, the next test after that comes at 590. And you know, right now you've gotta understand that this top ascending resistance line is what we've gotta get above before we can put 600 or 620 back on the table. And the market is absolutely left us, this, at the end of this week, it's absolutely left us in a bearish position because we broke down beneath this ascending wedge. And so until we get back above 575, you've gotta be more defensive in your investing and your trading. And until we get back above 575, the trend is clearly pointing down. So I know that sounds a little bit negative, but I am still believing in what I said at the beginning of the video, which is that November could be a great month. 
unless something unexpected happens in the election. And, you know, the way things are nowadays, it could be civil war. I mean, you know, people are just crazy about these politics. But more than likely, the election will go smooth and the market should return back to an up move. Got to first reclaim 575 to begin to get bullish again. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is absolutely in a bullish stance. We're up against a resistance area, but I see no reason why we wouldn't have a continuation. Basically cooled off in momentum so that we could begin to have a reacceleration towards the end of this year, getting Bitcoin to a new all-time high and initiating the altcoin season. I think that's right now. And so going into this weekend could be one of the very best times to be putting more money to work in crypto. And I'm going to be doing a live video with uh, some of the guys and we're going to be talking about some of your favorite coins the next, I think we'll do that perhaps tomorrow. So be aware of that. Uh, we're going to be talking about Sui. I bought some Sui the other day. Uh, not a huge position, but it was thousands of dollars. It wasn't 30 or 50,000. I'm starting slow. I want to get that confirmation. I want to get into November here where it's November 1st, but I want to get into the uh, after election moment and see that everything's going to go well and the market's going to go higher. So if I'm cautious, more than likely smart money's cautious, more than likely uh, Wall Street's gone risk off and they're waiting for the same things I'm waiting for. They want to see all that money pile back in to get bullish again and they'll throw their money back in and this will go gangbusters. But let's take a quick peek at the Bitcoin chart and we'll go from there. All right, you're looking at Bitcoin, you're looking at weekly candles and the significant price point that I'm watching for Bitcoin to close above is this 71,400. Now, we've broken above the resistance of the top of our bullish ascending channel. This was a massive breakout moment when we got above 70,000. Now we did get back to sort of one of these previous high levels and we rejected. And if you look over here, we've got the body of this green candle represents the highest close that the market ever achieved. And that's where we get this 71,400. That's the highest closing price on a weekly candle that the market achieved. And so we need to get this Sunday we want to see this candle close above this 71,400 and we want to see the next candle open above that and that could be the breakout moment going into next week where I would say that at minimum my expectation is a move to 77,000. That's my minimum expected move. Now it wouldn't at all be unrealistic for us to back test. Matter of fact it would be appropriate for us to back test this channel which could bring us back to right beneath 70,000 at 69,200. So we could back test that over the course of the next couple of days. And then going into next week, we could push all the way up to 77K. That, my friends, is what I would call the best case scenario for Bitcoin. And I'm going to leave you guys on the best case scenario for Bitcoin. If it gets ugly, I'll come out and we'll do another video. But right now, I do see on that chart also an ascending wedge. And so we don't want to see a weekly candle flush beneath that ascending wedge. And so I think the market has left Bitcoin in a very bullish position, prepared with enough gas in the tank for a huge momentum move next week, as long as everything goes well here in the States, here in America, as long as we can elect a president and not descend into civil war. Uh, today's data on the jobs report was terrible. The new unemployment report today was shockingly bad, but there were catalysts that were unrelated to the economy. And that's why I don't think that the market uh, took it too badly. Overall, I think they're going to be waiting for another jobs report to see uh, to see the state of unemployment in the United States and then the market could react badly to that. But I think that mostly Bitcoin is positioned for a breakout. The SPY has ended this week in a bearish position, but if we reclaim that 575, then it's 
off to the races again and 600 is back on the table. That's what I've got for you guys today. Hopefully you made a huge bag on Amazon following me, but if you didn't, then get into the Discord with me where I'm teaching how I trade and you get to live trade with me. You know, I made around 1500, I have to look at all the receipts, maybe more, while teaching right and uh, half my focus and i asked everybody how did they do today got a ton of people made money you know everything from 2400 down to 200 but a lot of people made around four or five hundred bucks we're doing that twice a week eight times a month and uh, it more than pays for the uh, highest level of the discord but if you just want to be in a great community I'm not the only one over there delivering value. And I get some folks will complain if for some reason I'm not in there one day. And I think that they are really overlooking trading with my crowned traders because they're incredible traders as well. And they're also teaching things different than what I'm teaching. And you can put it all together and do even better. So I hope you join us. Trade with me, learn to chart, trade with the crown traders, check out the Stocks with Josh Discord. Uh, and uh, the next video is gonna be more crypto focused. Uh, next week, man, it's all about next week. Next week, we're gonna find out whether or not this market's gonna have a rip your face off rally, or if the fact that we've broken beneath that ascending wedge already means that uh, we've entered into a longer downturn. I'm leaning bullish until I see a little bit more. That's where I'm positioned. I hope you guys found this helpful. Appreciate you guys checking in today. Hit that like, hit the subscribe if you're new to this page. Drop me a heart. Appreciate all of you guys. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye.